Man, it's difficult to breathe. I don't know what I got myself into. Well, how are you feeling? Or how this would all turn out. But in order to find out, you have to try it out. <laughs> it's uh, midnight. We're still out tracking. To reach great heights, you have to take that first step forward, which might feel like a huge leap of faith. That's what this entire experience was. A huge risk that seems to be accompanied by regret and an immense amount of pain. But looking back on it, the entire adventure as an aggregate was filled with so much beauty and everlasting moments I'd never give up. Something so pure, so unique that I'd never regret. The stars are beautiful. I don't know if you can see it on the iPhone, but that's the best part. Because no matter how painful it may seem right now, our time together was worth it. At some point, the things you hold dear to you, you gotta say goodbye to them. It won't be easy, but you have to turn them into great memories and never take them for granted. Then you go out and you create new ones. <laughs> Just capture in the moment, that's it. Memories. In the end, that's all you'll ever have. And you can always look back on them with appreciation for how they shaped you. Is this the end, or is it just the beginning? Hiding or processing? All different sorts of emotions have been flowing through me in the past weeks. Sometimes feelings of stillness, like the water that lay in front of me. And then other days, they hit me like a rapid river. I'm not entirely sure how to approach them at this given moment because this is a first time experience for me. I'm going through a new type of challenge I've never faced. Although it may appear as a physical one, it's really a test of mental fortitude. Panic. <sighs> paralyzation. These are the two things that will get you killed out here, and in order to survive, you must acknowledge your emotions, both good and bad, and then you accept them. Once you've accepted them, you can move forward, continue on and keep going without being dragged by these thoughts that at some point render useless to any form of forward progress. That's what you do here in the mountains. You keep climbing and you find out how far you can go. And with this camera and microphone that I deem an imaginary pen and paper, I shall express my feelings in order to come to terms with my spinning thoughts on this incredible adventure. Difficult, yet incredible nonetheless. Mount Everest. To talk about you and decipher your being remains a difficult task, even for someone like myself who has spent quite some time with you. You're like a canvas of esoteric art, made up of colorful patterns, unique from anything else. It's initially difficult to get to know you because you're exceptionally shy and somewhat distant. It takes a lot of walking to even get near the base of you. And even when you get near and anticipate your reveal, you're always covered in black. There she is. There's Mount Everest. And you rarely show yourself. You hide behind a wall of mountains as if you've been fortified at the highest point, like the keep of a castle, so that no one can get to you. 
there's no guarantee for anyone in meeting you up close and personal. But luckily, I was able to cross your path. Now getting to that point is an entire story in itself, so before we go any further, we have to remember where it all started. The airport. Update. It's uh, midnight. We're still out trekking. All our luggage and suitcase didn't make it. It came in a different plane. So I don't have gloves. Hopefully the luggage will arrive tomorrow. I don't have pants. One of the Sherpas is lending me his extra wet laundry. Before a fateful encounter actually happened, I wasn't sure if I'd actually ever see you. I always heard about you, saw you in photos, had your name come up in conversations, and many of my friends had already been graced with your presence. I've asked about you and tried to get information on you before, but no one had ever traveled far enough to give me any concrete details on your features. Traveling. This is how we met. I mean, it's the only way really possible because you're a mountain, you don't move. I, on the other hand, am the one who's always on the go from one place to another, and it seems fitting that I had to embark on this journey to make our paths cross. And that brings us back to the airport, where your presence was magical from the moment I stepped out of the plane. Dude. You're gonna go full send. That was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. You can't half ass that takeoff. Jeez. Lukla Airport, the most dangerous airport in the world. So that's why this is one of the most dangerous airports in the world. I overlooked all the risks and things that could possibly go wrong, and initially I didn't understand why they called it the most dangerous airport in the world. Until I hopped on that plane and took that very first ride. You get butterflies, twisting knots in your stomach. No, I break your plane. Hoping and wondering if things are going to work out. I could see how on any given day, especially if the weather's not right, things can get dicey really quick. Luckily for myself, the weather was perfect, and it would remain that way for the duration of this adventure. <laughs> With every climb, the journey is usually easiest in the beginning. Don't get me wrong, stepping into unfamiliar territories can be quite intimidating, which is why many of us never even attempt wow. to make that first step. Oh my but once you get past that fear and you're able to just soak it all in, it's exciting. <laughs> and that feeling of excitement overpowers all <laughs> other anxieties. It's an experience full of first times, as each day you get to learn something new about the mountain you didn't know before. You see different colors, different landscapes, which reveal the many costumes the mountain can wear. And at times, that of a green forest, and at others, a winter wonderland, dressed in all white. No matter which outfit the mountain puts on, it's absolutely stunning. But it's not all about the looks. It's the inner workings of the mountain that fascinate me most. How it moves, the amount of dedication and hard work that's involved behind the scenes. I never seen such hard working people in my life and perhaps that's one of the reasons I admire them so much and felt instant admiration. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Namaste. Namaste. But I also care for their health and hope they can remember from time to time that it's good to take a break every now and then and not overwork themselves. Then again, work is what brings them life and for some it brings them purpose. The hometown celebrity, international celebrity. I fanboy over him every single day. I give him a hug, I say hello, we hang out. Like almost every Sherpa I've come across, they love what they do. They've been able to build their own business from scratch, and it seems they're having so much fun doing it as if hiking up the mountain is like a game. As they mentioned, it can even be a form of escapism to get away from other problems they may have in their personal life. Kami is the world record holder for summiting Everest. He's summited Everest 25 times. He's 51 years old now. And now we, he, we got me talking and he's summiting. I'm a double. And uh, I asked him if I could join. And he just said, yeah, if you go out, buy the gear, get the permits and all that, I can join him, so. It's how they meet other people and expand their network. And although some people may think this type of work is only for the young and strong, they've proven otherwise and persevered through all the misconceptions. And, as rare as it may be, there are even some women. Something that stood out to me during this trip was, it's all organic. From the vegetables we ate, which were grown straight from the backyard greenhouses, to the fuel that comes free straight from the yaks. Water is boiled via concentrated sunlight. It's how we dry our clothes as well. There's not much plastic, and it's as natural and real as it gets. <laughs> oh no, no! <laughs> <laughs> Shy type. Doesn't like being filmed. Oh, she got my, she got my poles. <laughs> I gotta leave. She takes my stuff. Well, usually I'm the one always borrowing stuff around here, so maybe she's just trying to get back at me. It's mine is yours, what's yours is mine, right? And there's nothing more adorable than that laugh. Now, it's time for another first. We made it! <laughs> like I said before, which I can't stress enough, this trip has been full of first time experiences, pulling me out of my comfort zone and taking me for many types of rides I've never been on, weaving in and out through the mountains. That was something different. Reminds me of the first time I was taught to fly a drone, but this time it was like being inside of one. There I am thinking back. Hopefully we have a better flying experience this time around, because in previous drone flying moments in the mountains, it's been followed with a crash and search mission that lasted till the night. Luckily, we landed and didn't have to go through that. That was pretty Dude. rad. That was like a roller coaster mixed with, an, with those like rides. FBB. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't explain it, was, it. But that was terrifying. It was a little loose because we're at such high altitude. Like everything's kind of loose. Yeah. We're making input and it's like boom. A little floppy. <laughs> so when we went over the top of that hill, it was like ooh, ooh. <laughs> Damn, that was my first helicopter ride. That was exhilarating. That was sick.
That was cool. First helicopter ride in the Himalayas. Did you enjoy that? That was that was awesome. Awesome as it may be, I can't help but to ponder the ever so frequent thought passing through my mind. Something I've been diffident with for quite some time now. Should I be recording? I didn't stop it yet. Dear Sagarmatha, the more I admire your beauty, the more I wonder if it is something I should be sharing, or if I should have just kept it all to myself because that would have been the most genuine and safe way to undergo this interconnection that we've had together. The truth is, I came here for the adventure, for the experience, for the love. And naturally, I ended up documenting everything because that's what I do when I get excited. <laughs> I just want to share this feeling with the world. So I kept documenting everything since day one as if I'm on a reality show. But little did I know, it ended up being a reality show, and that unexpectedly became the hardest part about our time together. This is a, a reality show competition. We're all competing against each other. Climbing up this mountain, going through all the bumps along the road, and enduring everything this difficult journey entails. It's gonna be something cold and challenging. All whilst being filmed for millions to watch and to openly criticize how things should be done and how they shouldn't be. I never realized how hard it would be to live life that way, and I do question if publicizing your beauty will only lead to the added contamination of it. More publicity equals more visitors, more people who decide to show up. Most of them good, respectable people who will add to the income of this national park and even help the overall business of this operation to make it to the highest tier. But there are some, ignorant of their actions, who may contribute to the pollution. Pollution in all sorts of ways, which I never foresaw until it was already too late. You are a goddess, Agarmatha, and maybe it's better to keep things private, as you already have enough admirers and you don't need any more irresponsible hikers for the insignificant amount of proceeds that come with it. As rare as it may be, it pains me every time to see someone walk over you and litter you with rubbish. However, I've already showcased you, and it's too late to turn back, and for that, I apologize. But I hope people can respect you, and treat you properly, and only visit with good intentions and uplifting support. And that brings us to the most difficult part of this adventure. The ending. Everyone is eager to know about the ending, and many have created their own stories, almost fantasies, dark fantasies, of how this climb concludes. To endure the pain of the last summit push brings people to their utmost limit, and even leaves some lost in the mountains for the remainder of time. To narrate the ending of this climb requires a lot of emotional strength, as the entire experience has to essentially be relived. Everyone else has had to go through this bullet. So. And at this moment, I don't have enough left in my tank to keep going. For now, it's time to rest, and we can continue this journey tomorrow. <laughs>